Hello, my name is Ranjana and I'm the lead research analyst at Spoonshot. It's great to be here today to present our insights on what the future holds for health claims in food and drink. At the end of this presentation, I'll share a link with you where you can download this deck. Before we dive in, here's a quick intro on Spoonshot. We build food and drink innovation intelligence. With the predictive power of AI and domain knowledge of food science, we're able to see consumer needs early, translate them into the relevant trends, and map out the innovation opportunities they present. Our technology is powered by more than 26,000 data sources across 20 types of food and beverage data, everything from research papers to chef communities, from food reviews to news media. Even though our platform has only been available for less than 18 months, our intelligence is already used by six of the top 20 food manufacturers in the US. To download and digest our research, go to spoonshot.com forward slash white papers. And now we're offering a free version of our intelligence tool. So do visit our website to take advantage of this. Let's dive into our presentation then. One of the biggest trends within food and drink last year was immunity. We saw products being launched across most sectors with promises of boosting your immune system through wellness shots, flavored water, snack bars, and even chocolate. The reason for this was to better protect ourselves in some small way against COVID-19. Our data for the US showed that overall interest in immunity boosting food and drink went up by over 80% in the last year, mainly because of the pandemic. Immunity as a trend would have seen a much more modest growth had there been no pandemic. Another point we found was a major acceleration in consumer interest in the role of nutrition in immunity. Consumer conversations on social media saw a spike in certain ingredients and nutrients linked to immunity, including vitamin C and vitamin D, as well as elderberry and echinacea. When it came to the immunity claim on products, tea, baby food, and juices were among the top categories after dietary supplements. Um, in the ingredient space, the most popular ingredient was lemon, not surprising um, due to its high vitamin C content. Immunity has been having its moment in the sun and will probably do so for a little more time, but with the vaccine out, interest in generic immunity claims will likely go down. Instead, there will be greater demand for products that tackle specific issues with visible results. And this brings up the question of what issues to focus for product innovation over the next couple of years. We went back to social media to see what health issues people are concerned about. The top issues were not very surprising. Weight loss, muscle gain, and so on. And the long tail health topics were just too niche for mainstream claims. Enzyme production and acid base balance may not be top of mind for most consumers. So we looked at the set of in between health topics in social media, which is also where immunity falls. Of these, we expect three specific issues to become important to consumers in the coming year. Skin health, eyesight health, and dental health. These three topics did not show the same breadth of innovation as some of the other issues. Brain health, for example, has seen significant innovation in terms of products and ingredients in the last few years. Um, so these three topics do have a lot of scope for expansion. In addition, any change in skin, eye, or dental health is immediately felt by us. Another driver for um, this growth is the interest in self-care, which has grown by nearly 1,000% since 2016. Skin, eye, and dental health um, are more in the personal care space, but there are new ingredients and foods that we believe will drive the concept of ingestible personal care in the future. Now, without the pandemic, interest in skincare from food would have grown only by 8%. Um, in reality, it has grown by 31% in the last year. Maskne is a word that came into our lives this year, and it refers to acne that you get from prolonged mask use. 
Social media conversations referring to mask nay grew 13 times between July and October 2020 alone. And as a result of virtual meetings, we've spent a lot of time staring at our own image and coming up with flaws um, in terms of our skin. In fact, plastic surgeons are seeing a significant rise in consultations because of this. Collagen is a staple in the beauty industry and it's prized for its ability to keep our skin from sagging and looking young. In the last three years, however, it has also become a popular ingredient in some food categories linked to skin health. Just three categories, dietary supplements, drinks, and cereal bars, accounted for more than 80% of collagen-based foods. So there's a lot of scope to expand into other categories. Dough's enhanced cookie dough, for example, taps into the popularity of cookie dough as a comfort food, but offers the skincare benefit by including vegan collagen. And this is very on trend given the growing interest in plant-based foods and lifestyles. As we delve deeper into product launches, we found that there are next to no vegan food products with collagen. In fact, Doe's ingredient list itself refers to it as a vegan collagen boost made of plant-derived amino acids that aid collagen production in the body. And this is because collagen is very much dependent on animal sources like chicken and pork skin or bone broth. The growing demand for vegan collagen could perhaps bring back to the mainstream a near forgotten ingredient, carob seeds. These seeds are one of the few known plant sources for an amino acid that is vital to collagen production and is usually synthesized only in the body. However, in the long run, it may be more logical to look at lab-grown collagen. This has been a difficult compound to grow in a lab, but a couple of companies have seen recent successes in this regard. Interest in eye health is also set to grow in the coming year, given how much time we've spent in front of our screens, whether it's for work, online classes, or just binge watching Netflix. And too much time in front of screens can cause dry eyes or short sightedness. We expect to see growing interest in foods fe featuring nutrition for the eyes. Vitamin A and omega-3 fatty acids already have strong links to eye health, but keep an eye out for food and drink launches highlighting the antioxidants lutein and zeaxanthin. These two ingredients have shown um, in controlled studies to significantly reduce macular or eye degeneration, especially as one gets older. And one of the richest sources of these antioxidants is breadfruit, a staple in tropical regions and part of the jackfruit family. It is relatively unknown in the US, but is touted as the next superfood. And companies like Tasty Jungle are trying to bring this to the fore with products like pasta made from breadfruit flour. Dental health is also going to see a major boom in the coming year as a direct result of the pandemic. It's one of those issues that tends to be neglected until there's a problem, but COVID and the limited access to dentists actually has resulted in greater interest in oral health and hygiene. Without the pandemic, interest in oral health would have declined significantly more than it actually has. There are a couple of reasons for this in increased interest in oral health. A study by the American Dental Association found that a number of dental health issues had gone up significantly during the pandemic, largely induced by stress, such as teeth grinding. The second reason is that there are growing indications that good oral hygiene could improve testing accuracy as well as reduce the time that the COVID virus replicates in our body. Now, food is usually considered the cause of dental problems, but a new ingredient class called postbiotics is gaining ground that could make food as an aid for better oral health. Postbiotics are the byproducts of probiotic metabolism, and certain strains of postbiotics have shown to be effective in terms of improving oral health. 
because these are not live cultures, they can withstand heat and thus be incorporated into multiple food categories. Um, some of the foods associated with oral health are often chewing gum and mints, but sales of these products um, have significantly de um, declined due to social distancing and stay-at-home orders. Um, and perhaps the way to revive flagging, these flagging categories is by introducing postbiotics into chewing gum and mint. So what is the purpose of incorporating self-care and these functional ingredients into food instead of just popping a couple of pills? Well, for the first time ever in 2018, the number of people over the age of 65 years outnumbered children under the age of five. And the same year, interest in the desire for healthy aging saw a spike. And this is because consumers are um, becoming more aware of growing healthcare costs, lack of access to healthcare, and longer working years. And this, we expect, will continue to drive the interest in healthy aging. And finally, a quick recap. Based on our data, Skin health, eye health, and dental health will take center stage in the coming year or two as a direct result of the pandemic. The new ingredients that will gain some traction in connection with these health issues are vegan and lab-based collagen, breadfruit, and postbiotics, respectively. For brands looking to innovate in these areas or incorporate these ingredients, it will also be important to focus on familiar formats so as to better appeal to consumers. And that thought brings this presentation to a close. Thank you very much for your time today. And do please visit spoonshot.com and get started on our insights platform for free. Have a great day and year ahead. Thanks once again.